Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm Joe. I'm Melissa. And this is your call show guide to punch, chop, and kick your way through the greatest era of action movies, 1975 to 1995. This week, we have something a little bit different. We have a kind of announcement and a retro review of what it's been like the last seven movies that we've talked about on this here podcast. So a little bit out of the normal episode for us, and it really is a chance for us to talk about uh, a little deeper about what our format is for the show. So that's what our plan is for today, is how we're going to talk about, hey, what can you expect out of the Go With The Heat podcast since we've come back and talked about movies and uh, kind of changed about how we're talk- what we're talking about on this here show since retiring from Miami Vice. Depending on how long you've been on this journey with us, you'll remember the Miami Vice that we loved the action of that era. We really tried to channel that once we got through the entire show to uh, our love of also bad action movies. <laughs> Plan today is to talk about um, what's going to happen with the show, kind of one of our favorite moments from these movies that we've watched, and then end with our classic, always my favorite most fun that i have in producing this show which is to put together the clip show (laughs) and so we're going to run a clip show at the end of this and then we're going to take a hiatus until we're ready to start our next season all that all the announcements of that stuff is going to be coming up very soon in the show definitely stick around if you're like i don't care about the logistics about how the show happens or what you guys think are great i just want to get straight to the clips you can just skip ahead and of course i mean Pretty much the entire clip show is just going to be us talking about Dolph Lundgren's gigantic penis. I think that is the whole clip show, right? It's all about the dong. (laughs) And that reminds me of the time. Go ahead and insert whatever you want there. I'm like, well, we're going to hear a juicy story from John about someone's dong. (laughs) One time at the park. (laughs) But as always, we like to say this show doesn't take any sponsorship. No one pays us to do this show, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, we We don't get anything for this. this So, you know, we don't don't do ads. We don't run any ads. If you want to pay us for this show, I'm just saying. We're just saying, saying, we take it. (laughs) For the love of God, someone pay us for (laughs) it. So, of course, no sponsorship, and that means this week's episode is brought to you by Vapor Rub Nasal Tubes. <laughs> They're just already coated. You just shove them up in your nasal passage, and it works from the inside out. That's what is brought, this episode is brought to you by, as you can tell by my voice, because I need them really bad. He's got them in his nose right now. <laughs> 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 Looks like two tampons shut up there, but <laughs> it works. Nice. Nice. Hey, I'm prototyping it. So, yes, they are tampons dipped in vapor rub, and they are shoved up my nose. But in the next iteration, they will be smaller. <laughs> Good thing they got the strings, huh? <laughs> we like to thank Vapo Rub Nasal Tubes for sponsoring this here podcast. And Feel can... free to set this product. Um, <laughs> as, as we will get much use out of them. And it's not Vic spelled the same way. It's V-I-X. <laughs> <laughs> Fix, bitch. By the dollar Nasal store tubes. brand. Exactly. <laughs> LA is totally awesome. <laughs> LA is totally awesome. <laughs> Vapor rub. Yes. It'll clear your nasal passage, degrease your engine, <laughs> and sanitize yes. your toilet. And shine your tires. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, so let's get into it and talk about what this show is like what we've done so far this season and this is going to lead into what it is that the next season is going to be so we wanted to take the season format because i mean because none of y'all are paying us to do this so just doing it out of the (laughs) kindness of our hearts (laughs) not that we're bitter about that (laughs) but we we wanted to take the season format because it's not because we want to take big long breaks although those are nice what we want to do is we want to set a theme for each of the seasons there are so many amazing action movies that are from this era and we want to set a theme for each season and then allow us to change up what the theme is on a consistent basis so it doesn't have to always be just some random movie we want it to be a full-blown theme yeah exactly yeah and the funny story is is we almost did this by accident we noticed about three or four movies in that like we kept landing at 1991, and we kept having every movie had a reoccurring guest star from the last movie. So it was almost done by accident at first. Definitely something that I'm excited to to get into in the future. Yeah, and that's what caught our attention about, the, and got our like piqued our interest on the theme idea. Like, well, we've kind of had a theme all this season. 
It's been 1991. It's been uh, someone who's appeared in this movie was also in the last movie. Uh, oh, yeah, and that guy, Joel Silver. He does he's, a few things. I mean, he's always doing something. <laughs> I think every season will be a Joel Silver thing. <laughs> Joel, if you got some extra cash, follow up it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> We'll give you a producer credit. <laughs> the next season, when we pick it up, we're going to have a dedicated theme that won't be the same as this one. We have some ideas already, not going to talk about what those are going to be until the kickoff of the, the first episode of the next season. That's when we will announce the theme of the season and we will announce the list of movies that we're going to watch during that run. So if you want to watch along, you want to get your hands on them before we get to them, you just want to watch them all in one weekend, uh, or you just want to give us some feedback on the movies that we chose we're going to announce them all up front say this theme is this and here's the list of movies that we're going to be watching in the order that we're going to be watching them so then you can set your expectations say eh, you know i'm probably not that interested in that movie but the next one that's one of my favorites i'm definitely going to be involved in that one so that's why we want to announce the movies ahead of time so we get lots of people to say don't watch those movies those are not good movies <laughs> When we announce it, you see all the list of movies that are going to be coming up in the dates, all that. So now let's get to the date. The next season of the Go With The Heat podcast will start on March 22nd, almost exactly two months from the day that this episode comes out. So today we're in great spirits because the Kansas City Chiefs won their divisional round of the playoffs as we record this. It's not going to come out until yes. after the AFC Championship game. And John may not be in a great mental state to record after that time anyway. <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. The Kansas City Chiefs should be on the way to a Super Bowl after uh, <laughs> after this comes out. So Tickets bought to Miami. Ready to go. They're just yes. all packed up. They're ready to go. go well, take to be honest, this, a lot of this is because of Miami. Thank you, Fitzmagic. <laughs> so the next episode of the first episode of season two of the go with the heat movie podcast will be on march 22nd and that's when you'll get all the details of what the theme is and the movies that we're going to be watching in that one but let's recap a little bit about what we watched this season and actually kind of jump in on what everyone's favorite movie was from this season we talked about they were connected you no know, joel silver they're almost all of them nearly all almost of them all of them were, were 91. From 1991 so I'll kick off about what my favorite movie is from this section or season one from season one, what my favorite movie was. And man, it is, it is a hard choice for me to choose. Like I we know. watched a ton of great, great movies <laughs> and looked at them from a totally different perspective than we would ever watch these movies. Yes. Um, I'm going to have to say that my favorite is uh, Harley Davidson. I'm going to have to say it's Harley Davidson in the Marvel World, man. Because that, first of all, it's a sci-fi movie. And <laughs> okay. none of us saw yes. that okay. coming. <laughs> it's set in the future. <laughs> it's not a sci-fi movie. <laughs> it's in the future <laughs> when all of LA is just an airport. <laughs> <laughs> it's one giant airport. <laughs> It's. I had no idea what to anticipate in that movie, and surprise, surprise, Mickey Rourke, not much of an actor. No, not in that one anyway. <laughs> I, yeah, I honestly, I expected Mickey Rourke to be better, and, and I hate to say it, Don Johnson to be worse, and it was the opposite. Don Johnson was great, <laughs> Mickey Rourke was terrible. Yeah, I know. And it was a stacked cast, too. There were so many people in that movie. And the Don Johnson portions were great. But Mickey Rourke and then, uh, what's his name? The guy that, that that's the bad guy? Oh, Michael, not Michael Madsen. Um, oh, my God. Um, what is his name? John. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Sizemore. Tom Sizemore. Or as I like to call him, John Sizemore. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> And Tom Sizemore, and then the dudes in the trench coats, the chonky ones. They were chonky. <laughs> yeah, they were chonky. Them dick boys. They were coming hard. <laughs> yes. So speaking of coming hard, Melissa, I think I know what your favorite movie is from this section. Well, can I just pick like a... I was just going to say it with Dolph Lundgren's penis is my favorite, <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, no, actually, to be honest with you, I 
I liked Harley Davidson and the Marble Man. So mm-hmm. I know we shouldn't pick the same ones, but that's what I I, <laughs> I do what I want and I pick what I really like. So because it's on Johnson. <laughs> We all know I didn't like Ricochet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty obvious. <laughs> Not a fan of the Ricochet. Sean, what about you? So I, I think my favorite technically is the first three quarters of Ricochet. <laughs> but since that's not the full movie <laughs> and only the first three quarters, uh, I'm going to have to go with Die Hard 2. And it is because everybody talks so much about the original. And then everyone likes Die Hard with a Vengeance with Samuel L. Jackson. It gets forgotten. And it is a fantastic movie and a Christmas movie. I mean, yeah, it's a holiday special, basically. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. The one that I would say that I had the most fun putting together, like all the production and the show notes and everything was all the Rocky stuff that we did. In particular, taking the deeper look at yeah. Rocker 3, which is the one that I I probably normally st- like skip over or like pay the least attention to yeah. well that's true yeah and, and i i said that when we recorded too is that like this is probably the one i go back and watch the least because i always go back and watch one you always watch four you know but i don't think i ever go back and watch three really and i think rocky would be my two for this too because it also forced me to watch the the new creed movies and i really like those i thought those were really good stopping to take a deeper look on the movies is like the big change for me Mm -hmm. because we picked for the first season we did pick movies like a lot of movies that we had seen not just once before but a lot of times before yeah that we just genuinely liked Mm -hmm. them or we want you know but then when you see it from a different perspective you know it's the same thing with demolition man that was one where i've always loved that movie and then taking a deeper look into it you're like okay you know it's not the best but then also seeing that it's it's like oh i get it i get all the little stuff now that's more like the fifth element which Mm -hmm. is like it's intentionally obviously it's intentionally cheesy but like the little stuff that's hidden in there that you take a deeper look at (laughs) i mean well we we hadn't seen showdown in little tokyo yet so that was a gem though yeah Yes. That would be yeah, my second yeah. for sure. Not just no, because of Dolph's but, big penis, but. <laughs> but no, to expand on what Dominic was saying, like with Demolition Man, like I forgot some stuff about that movie, like all of the commercial jingles that oh, yeah. were in, in the movie. Like I forgot about that, like having to do music and actually have to research that, which that's the giving these movies are basically our vice treatment. I've learned a lot about both, you know, the guest stars and, and like the different soundtrack stuff. And I'm starting to learn stuff about movie soundtracks. Like, like a lot of times it's, they just hire people to make cheesy songs for the movie. So, but it's like, they're not real songs or like yeah. they're never released. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's and- like songs describing what's going on <laughs> in the movie. You mean like Friday night is a great night for football? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Or rap songs about the entire movie. (laughs) The music has been fun because, A, like what you're talking about, where they hired people that just do that. And the music doesn't appear anywhere else. It's written just for the movie. But then also that it's music that's so far outside of what we did with Vice. Yeah, that's true. Because there was there's actual no Peter like... Gabriel. There's, there's yes. very yeah, limited. Yeah, it's actually Genesis. good music. <laughs> oh, well, and I, I, I never thought I'd say this, but I miss the Vice music at times. <laughs> you mean you didn't like I'm learning getting... about hot dog soap? <laughs> I am getting to learn more about scores than I ever cared to. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Just taking for granted that Genesis isn't making an appearance in the music every week. I know. Oh, I am sure somehow Phil Collins is related to to some to some or all of the music that I am doing. I'm just not going (laughs) to acknowledge it anymore. You stay out of my music, Phil. So we want you to stick around for the clip show. We have a ton of stuff that we talked about, not just Dolph's dong. That That was just the best conversation. Excuse me. (laughs) So we encourage you to stick around for the clip show. We really, really appreciate you for hanging out with us in this first season of the Go With The Heat movie podcast. We really, really want you to come back for season two on March 22nd. So just say subscribe to this feed. When that episode comes out, it'll hit your feed. You'll be ready to go. That first episode will be the one that explains what the theme is for that season and all the movies that we're going to be watching. We're going to be sticking to the bi-weekly format. So starting March 22nd, every other week, you'll get a new episode of the Go With The Heat movies 
podcast along with the full list of all the movies. And if you want to stay up to date on all the other things that are happening with the podcast, we encourage you to go to the website, go with the heat.com. You can click on subscribe on all the ways to follow the show, but then you can also find all the ways that you can follow us, whether it be on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the places where you can follow along with us and know early when the theme is picked and where the movies are being picked out if you want to see the behind the scenes on that be sure to follow our social media channels you'll be able to see when all those things are coming out and actually have a voice in the selection process as because we'll be posting that early before the season starts and so we encourage you to go follow us there email us go to heat at gmail.com we'd love to hear from you that way you can tell us what you think of the new format what movies we should do what kind of themes you would like to see us do and um you know just a general love letter we won't turn down any love letters, especially if they're, yo, give me your e- your other email address so I can send you money. We, we will answer those <laughs> yeah, all day, every day. Any amount of money you want to send. We'll a take penny, your a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> Just tape a nickel right to a card and mail it to us. I think it'll get here. I think that's okay. I think the post up. We're going to call it dollars for John. <laughs> send us a dollar. John will get a nickel. <laughs> yes. So that's going to do it for us this week. Be sure to stick around for the clip show. And we're going to see you in about eight weeks for season two of the Goal with the Heat movie podcast. Bye, pals. You're right. This is a special era in that you can be a big name actor and be in a small budget or like an off the rails, like it's some wacky script. And it didn't matter. You could just be in this movie. It could not even be in theaters and people didn't care. Are you saying Tango and Cash went off the, <laughs> <laughs> off the rails? <laughs> I'm telling you, Stallone made what? Three Rambo movies without a script? Well, I think he's made this last one without one, too. <laughs> okay, so we're up to five now, maybe. In theaters now is Rambo. So. <laughs> yes. No script. No talking. It's just murder people with a crossbow. Episode 137, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. Marble's like, you know, I can't handle you anymore. I'm going downstairs. He goes and he calls Virginia, and that's when he sees some thick boys coming in. Damn thick boy. <laughs> and this is when we get that scene, too, where, he, where Baldwin gets out of the elevator and he turns. And he's looking, he smuggles some fine hams in his jacket. <laughs> he looks like he's carrying pineapples. <laughs> Only in the bottom region, though. He's wearing a fake ass. I'm telling you, it's two kids, and the one on the bottom is fat, okay? <laughs> Stacked on top of each other. <laughs> Either that or it's like a horse costume. <laughs> There's someone in the bottom. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, for the diversion. Long story short, to get away from the nihilists, because clearly it's, it takes a long time to climb down with that kind of a jacket, trench coat that they're wearing. Every time you forget that this is a sci-fi movie, they bring in just enough to remind you, hey, by the way, this is a sci-fi movie. This isn't a, a cowboy movie. This isn't a robbery movie. This is a sci-fi movie. I did not get that. In the, like, I understood about the airplane, but when I saw those guys walking with like the, the plastic trench coats, I did not get that that was sci-fi. I was like, oh, so they're in a gang. Like, it's a really stupid gang. This is like something out of the yeah. Warriors. They have matching outfits. Well, they have roller skates too. <laughs> that's the problem. It's like they, they the whole time in all the scenes they're wearing those matching outfits, and like it wasn't until the end that I realized, like, oh, they're supposed to be bulletproof. Yeah, I didn't get it either until you said, like, oh, they're bulletproof. I'm like, oh, that's why they wear them. They look like they have two men in there, right? Like, like two men standing <laughs> on top of each other. <laughs> like like was, you want to yeah, sneak like into the movie theater the, or something, you know? <laughs> two kids standing on each other's yeah, shoulders. Exactly. <laughs> Like, is that a man or is that two fat kids standing on top of each other? <laughs> so they do. They back together, which they figured out was the tracking device. And then it suddenly pops up. The blinky thing starts doing the thing in the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> because the helicopter has been going for two days straight. Just circling around. That's everywhere. great. <laughs> yeah, the they're way. all piled in the helicopter flying. And like all of a sudden it starts blinking. Like, hey, look, the blinky thing's going again. <laughs> And it's great because like they, they go and they fly straight there and it, it it it's it's clearly a trap. Like where has it been for the last six hours? <laughs> like it didn't like do you think they changed the batteries for you? Like is that what you think happened? It's just it's wild because like were they just out 
flying around? They were just flying around for days. Like, were they looking or were they just doing different things? Like I think they just used a helicopter for everything. Like, we gotta go to 7-Eleven. <laughs> make a run. Get in the helicopter. Episode 138, The Last Boy Scout. When we open up Friday Night Football. Actually, I'll give this guy credit. This is way better than Hank Williams Jr. Also, Friday Night is well, a better and- night <laughs> than Monday Night and Thursday Night. <laughs> I'll get into this more in music, but they actually commissioned a full out song for this. <laughs> Friday night's not a bad night for football. I mean, the song you know, says I, it's I'm... a great night for football. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you heard that. It said that Friday night, the, the actual <laughs> lyrics of the song are Friday night's yes. a great night for football. <laughs> Very simple and I to the point. Make... <laughs> I just want to make the point that 1991 Thursday night football didn't exist. And I was always curious why they chose Thursday night instead of Friday night. Like, why Why is Thursday special? Why do we want it in the middle of the week like that? I, so I we, guess they're worried about we, we could have, with people going out for the night. I think so. I think it is, too. I felt like we were probably close to having a Friday night football in reality. Who knows why they ended up going with Thursday, but I'm sure that was part of the conversation. Based on this song... Thursday's not a great night. <laughs> Football. <laughs> That's and the song is proof. <laughs> the song is River, which is written by Gary Bruce, but performed by Pat Boone in 1961. <laughs> so Pat Boone is an American singer and composer, actor, writer, TV personality, motivational speaker, and just all around old person. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is he's a quintessential old, old person he was a successful pop singer in the 50s and 60s and at one point in time he had so, he sold over 45 million records and was like second to only elvis in, you know as far as the biggest charting artist in the 50s he had 38 top 40 hits he appeared in 12 films, but as a conservative Christian, he turned down a number of risque roles, including ones that involved uh, more risque sexual actresses like Marilyn Monroe. Yes, he turned down movies with Marilyn Monroe <laughs> because she was too sexy. Too much. It was too much, that dress. I don't go around. I don't go around sexualized women because you can't trust them, right? You know, it's them that you can't trust. Can't, it's not you. Can't be in them. that movie with that woman. They, they show her ankles. <laughs> I did not think that was where it was going. With that. I'm like, oh my god. So, I guess. It's- Episode 139: Showdown in Little Tokyo. He's taking her to but that's what I'm saying. Bus- He's got. He looks so disinterested. I, I was waiting for the Ivan Drago. It's like the most boring train to pound town that ever. <laughs> <laughs> not into it like if he was writing it as a yelp review he would say four out of ten don't recommend (laughs) he really wasn't into it but his boy johnny was loving it from the other room he's watching the whole time he saw his big ass wang and he can't wait to talk about it all right we gotta say okay we we made a bunch of jokes about his gigantic penis about this whole movie right we don't really know if Dolph Lundgren has a huge penis, have, just yeah. for the record. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I'm speculating that it is true. <laughs> we hope the best. <laughs> just make sure we're clear here, because where this, this joke. comes from, <laughs> it's because right after the most boring pound town visit that's ever existed, some people are storming his place, and Kenner goes out to talk to Johnny. And while talking to Johnny, Johnny says, quote, you have the biggest dick I've ever seen. Because he's out of nowhere. He's like, I saw you guys out there in the hot tub. I knew that was going to happen because he's like, oh, Monaco's in my room and we were just sleeping or whatever. And he's like, I saw you out in the hot tub. I knew that was going to happen. And then like, he's like, hey, by the way, you have the biggest dick I've ever seen. <laughs> you were like, what? <laughs> and then Dolph Lundgren doesn't say anything back. He's like, cool. That's a for real line. Yeah. It's just kind of like awkward. Movie. What do you say? Thanks. Um. <laughs> It's been edited three times, and at a certain point, like they're filming the scene. Do they not have a script for this? Like they had nothing to say other than, "Man, your dick is big." <laughs> like that was the only thing they could come up with. Like, like at you. the time, no one was like, "Hey guys, like, like shouldn't we try and work a joke in?" Like, <laughs> is there some way other that we could connect? acknowledge the fact that johnny's been watching them bang the only thing i can think of is that in writing this that stephen glance and calliope brattle street got together and said 
Okay, so when we describe the ultimate hero in this movie, what does he have? Like, oh, he's tall. He's got big muscles. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a really nice guy, too. He always thinks of the little person. <laughs> yeah, he's also got a gigantic tongue. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's some kind of, like, hidden message Massive in that. Like, wang. <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's some i want i know you know what i don't care i'm just gonna say it i'm gonna think about this movie forever and fondly and think that Dolph lundgren has a huge penis and they were like we have to work this into the movie <laughs> brandon's like i've seen it it's big we gotta work it in i saw it touching the urinal cake i'm sorry oh that's how i will remember this movie <laughs> Because that's the only good thing that came out of it. So. <laughs> it was so big that they're like, we can't not mention it. We have to mention it. That's what I'm Episode 140, Our Heart Belongs to Rocky. Well, let's all be real here. First of all, that's the greatest montage in the history of okay. montages. No. Yes. We're going to argue about this because, no, the greatest montage is in Rocky IV where he drives in the car and he thinks about his friendship with <laughs> Apollo and it has that montage in it. But also it's him driving his car and shifting the gears really fast. Come on. The song's about him driving. Yes. The song's about him driving and about losing his friend and about how it really is his fault because he should have thrown in the towel. You may have a point because that one's got a montage inside of a montage. It's a montage instead of a montage of the best montages. <laughs> I don't know, though, because this is a montage of one man's battle to overcome laziness while trying not to poop himself <laughs> while running on the beach. I'm just saying. Two, Apollo Creed should be fighting Clubber Lang because I Apollo know. is in amazing shape. He's like freaking <laughs> he a machine. so much better shape. <laughs> oh my god when you yeah, see he's him running like run. circles around rocky in all these scenes of him training rocky is like really trying hard he's struggling like you mentioned the sudden diarrhea at the mall look on his face <laughs> while he's running on the beach <laughs> meanwhile apollo is a fine-tuned smooth and graceful doesn't it look like he's trying no every muscle in his body is like tight and firm <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Wilson's having a moment. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even talking about Michael B. Jordan yet. No. <laughs> so, episode one forty one, Demolition Man. That cocktail is not prepared for, which is to defrost Spartan. We go through the defrost process, which is put him in the microwave for about five minutes. <laughs> Halfway through, rotate him, stir him, put the plastic <laughs> cover back yeah. on for another two and a half minutes, and then <laughs> uh, check and make sure he's at a. Th- <laughs> 180 degrees or yeah but first put the microwave on half power though 50 percent power <laughs> yeah if you put it on too hot it'd just like burn him and he would just, he'd be he would be <laughs> just like burns the edges that is cold in the middle <laughs> exactly the edges would be like really hard and burned and then the middle he'd just be solidly frozen <laughs> like burritos you got 50 percent power that thing <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a tip about 7-Eleven microwaves. I, <laughs> I, 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 know my I way, have experience. I know my way around those. When- Violence can cause sex. And I I mean, I saw you out there. Damn. Oh, yeah. Damn. All I'm thinking about is doing sex. That's all I'm thinking about. See, can we do the totally sex? Totally wants please? the bang. <laughs> Spartan is like, yeah, yeah okay. sure, why not? Hey, yeah, you want to go mean, for a round? Let's go for it. He got over his wife being dead pretty fast, didn't he? That was only that was like earlier in the day. <laughs> Who was at two o'clock? <laughs> she was dead. Ten o'clock. He's like, yeah, let's uh-huh. bang. I mean, she, I was frozen. She was dead. I have a small penis, but let's go. <laughs> It still hasn't it's thought. Shrinkage, Melissa. It's it, shrinkage. It hasn't thought out yet. Okay. <laughs> well, and that's why, like, the helmets should work for work in this advantage because they put on these helmets and they mentally have sex without actually touching each other. But he flips out as soon as she psychically fingers him in the butthole. <laughs> she went a little too far. <laughs> I just would love to hear from you. What do you think about them, Militia Man? I'm ordering you. Damn it. <laughs> You're going to email us, and you're going to tell us what you think about Demolition Man. You're going to tell us how you think those three seashells work. <laughs> Let's not what do that. What exactly do you do with the three seashells? What is the process yeah. of that? <laughs> would, would you buy hot dog scented dial soap? <laughs> you know what I want you to do? Don't email me it. I want you to go to iTunes, and I want you to leave us a review. Leave us a five-star review. Um, we haven't asked dog? for one of these in a long time. <laughs> 
You haven't asked for this. We want you to go to iTunes. Give us five stars. I don't know where you do that, Tony. Just give us five stars. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that'll help people find the show. It'll help us improve our rankings. So then when a movie comes along, someone doesn't want to listen to, they'll find us. They'll be able to find us. The same thing on any other your podcast or platform. So we, we, we leave us a five-star review. But then don't write a review. Write about hot dog flavored soap. <laughs> <laughs> flavored, <laughs> scented, not flavored. No, flavored. Oh, okay. I want flavored. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell are you doing in the shower? That's why our soap disappears so fast. <laughs> Sitting there gnawing on it. <laughs> Damn, I wish this was that hot dog scented one. That's so much better. <laughs> so in the review, right? If you prefer a hot dog flavored or a hot dog scented. What is, you want your hot dog soap to taste like hot dogs. <laughs> also, be shaped like a hot dog. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta clean some hard to reach places. <laughs> Go leave that. Episode 142, Die Hard 2. Holly McLean, played by Bonnie Bedelia. And actually, she was born Bonnie Bedelia Culkin. So <laughs> her parents, her parents, I bring that up because her parents were a journalist and a writer, but they pushed all four of their kids towards acting. Their kids being Christopher, a.k.a. Kit, Terry, and Candace Culkin, other than Bonnie. Now, Bonnie was the first to get in acting, but Christopher Kit is the father of Macaulay and Kirian Culkin. Okay, there we go. I'm like, there's got to be a Macaulay Culkin yeah. <laughs> connection to so, this somehow. So, Bonnie is technically Macaulay Culkin's aunt. Wait, you're talking about there could be the, the I mean, the single greatest movie crossover of all <laughs> I time. I know where you're going with this. Which is <laughs> Macaulay Culkin versus John McClane in <laughs> Home Alone 7. <laughs> <laughs> totally possible because technically Holly McLean would be his character's aunt in that movie, my guess. Wonder funny that she wasn't invited to Paris though. Must be when they were going through the divorce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, Writing I'm, fan fiction over here. I'm here for John McLean stepping on ornaments and getting his feet cut up, but still making it to the roof and jumping off with a hose <laughs> tied around his waist. <laughs> she was the Airport security. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The entire movie takes place in an airport. Never once do they go back to like FBI headquarters. If they do have it, I would love to have like a movie that's Dolos Airport SVU. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's yes. enough crime at the airport. Special like, crimes division. Damn, we've got our fifth homicide of the day. <laughs> uh -huh. L LAX homicide. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to sleep. Until I get a TV episode of a Dulles Airport SVU, <laughs> and there's someone who is a serial killer that talks to dolls. <laughs> and it's got to be one. <laughs> now episode 143, Ricochet. So his arrogance again at mm -hmm. the DA's office. Like, listen, I have the proof right here, though. Here's this video of Blake attacking my girls. He puts in the tape, and it's straight to <laughs> porno. Like, high-quality porno, oh, yeah. too. Like, <laughs> But my thing oh is, man, he's giving it to her. <laughs> why does he? Re why did he like? Oh no, I need to rewind this. Like, why did he just stop right there? He's like, no, no, wait. I, I don't rewind. know. But like at this point, the cocaine's making him sound super paranoid too, because he's like tripping over himself. Yeah, he's like, no, wait, I was there, and I said no, but I don't know. And then they show it on the news, and it's like redacted. <laughs> Like, don't show your he's children still, this, he, but it still looks he's like still a He's still throwing it to her. He's still throwing it to her. It's On the news. It's, all it's barely all it's blurred. blurred is like the, her butt and her breasts. <laughs> Everything else like the, the, that, the... That actually, that should actually help his polling. This, this next part of the plan, not too terrible. Get some high, get some laid, make some porno. I don't like, know. Clearly, it's Sykes' first time doing a porno, but the chick, like, she's experienced. This is like her fifth or sixth yeah, porno. Yeah, but he got the clap this from point. it. <laughs> but he does get the clap. Well, and, she, and also, she's one of those breasts with no nipples. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but none of this is that big of a deal because, I mean, he can still be mayor after this, like Mary and Barry was. <laughs> Just saying, she had no nipples, all right? It's weird. 